Hello, welcome back to another episode from Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. I'm Bill, glad you could join me. Today we're cooking with solar. Stay tuned. Okay, what I have here is a car sunshade. I picked these up at the 99 cent store. There's two grades of these. Some are real thin and cheap and uh, these are actually pretty thick. Pretty well made. You can't beat them for 99. Heck of a deal. The shininess on these is uh, mylar. It's the same material that the uh, space blankets are made from. Uh, the space blankets you can pick up in the in the uh, camping section of most of the uh, box stores and whatnot, and you can get them online. Anyways, this mylar uh, is very reflective, so it doesn't absorb anything. And we're going to use that to our advantage today. There's other uses I use these. I keep a few of these in my kit. Um, I use these personally as a ground pad. Fold it out, put your bedroll on top. It keeps you, it's a layer of protection against the damp ground. The uh, reflective coating is on both sides. So on the bottom side, it reflects the cold back down onto itself. And then the top side where you're laying on it uh, reflects your body heat back to you. And uh, they work really good for that. And these thicker ones, the better quality ones, have a certain degree of padding to them. So it's a little bit, gives you a little bit of comfort instead of laying on the hard ground. Uh, that's a big benefit for uh, those of us that are not getting any, any younger. Uh, they also make a good fire reflector. Instead of uh, cutting down live trees and saplings to build a reflector, of course you can build one out of deadfall but I see a lot of guys some with pretty good you good size YouTube channels and it doesn't seem like they can go camping without cutting down a bunch of saplings to make a fire reflector even if it's going to get down to a, a chilly 50 degrees at night so these are a good alternative fold it out put a couple stakes in the ground uh, hook it up it's got a couple holes in it too eyelet holes and uh, just string it across and it'll really reflect the heat back to you big time uh, so that's just a few uses but there's another use that these could be used for that uh, some of you may be aware of and some may maybe not these can be used as a solar cooker an improvised solar cooker and they work okay we have a problem though we have a lot of forest fires so there's a lot of smoke in the air and I don't know if you can see back behind me, the sun's pretty filtered. So uh, we're gonna, it's going to be quite a test for this. So we're going to go ahead and uh, set this up. And then we'll prepare the food. And we'll stick it in there and see how it goes. If it doesn't cook, then the animals are going get to a, get a treat. So we'll, uh, we'll give it a shot. Stay tuned. All right, I found a spot here, an opening between the trees, and spin this screen around, make sure I'm in frame. So we should be in the sun here for quite some time. It's fairly open right here in the uh, forest canopy, and I'm going to go ahead and set it up right here. What I do with mine, I put some Velcro strips on it. And here's the eyelets that I was talking about just a bit ago. There's another eyelet over here. They're actually pretty good quality for the money. So I put two strips here. This is the loop part, the fuzzy part. And this is the hook part on this side. how you form these. So 
little bit of a rustling match at first to get this warmed up here. Line the Velcro up just like that. So what we've done we've created an improvised parabola. It's a it's a dish shaped. So go ahead. Now I have my arm inside here. I can already feel the heat. Even with the sun being as filtered as it is, I could feel the heat in here. So, wow, this might work. So, we'll go ahead, we're going to go prepare the food. We're going to get the food prepared and uh, then we'll bring it back over here. And we'll show, uh, show you how to align this. You want to get it facing into the sun and the way you do that you step behind it and look at the shadow the shadow should be symmetrical on both sides so you just kind of turn it as you turn it one side will get longer the other side shorter so you just want to you want to find that happy medium in between and that is just about the happy medium right there you go ahead and put something in here so it doesn't blow away. Put a little extra in there. So we'll go ahead and head on back over to the camp and uh, get the food prepared. Stay tuned. All right, what we're gonna cook here today is a game hen. I quartered this last night and applied a lot of seasoning to it. These are the two breasts. These are the uh, legs and with thighs attached. Now when you do this, you want to use a black pot or kettle. Uh, the black will absorb the heat. It's very important if it's uh, silver reflective it's going to reflect the heat away. It's not going to work as well or maybe not even at all. So and the smaller the pot that you can get by with the better. This is the smallest one that I have. So this is the one that I'm going to use today. One of my old beat up pots here. Go ahead and we're going to put the meat in the pot. And I quartered it so it'll help it cook a little bit faster. Put those down there temporarily. Not going to leave them there, obviously. Okay, so this is what we have. Go ahead and cut up the potato. <sighs> yeah, it's really smoky up here at the all the forest fires that we're, we've been experiencing. Kind 
gonna scatter these potatoes around. what we have lemon Go ahead and squeeze some lemon juice in here All right, a lot of lemon juice in there. Oh yeah. Just hope we have enough heat to cook it. Now when you use this method, when you use this method, it's very important to use it, put it, the pot in an oven baggie. The oven baggie helps trap the heat and the steam. You can use this method to cook with. You can also use it to uh, purify water. And I'm gonna grab my twisty tie off of the back of my camera mount here. And I put it there purposely because If I did not, there would be a good chance it would be missing. Now you know your food is cooking. When condensation forms inside the bags, when you see the condensation forming, you know it's hot enough. that water is turning to vapor. That's always a good yardstick to use to measure the uh, progress of the food. So we'll just gather it up, twist it, and we're set. The nice thing about the oven baggies is these can be reused. When you're done, when it's finished, just turn it inside out, wash it, let it dry, it's ready for another one. And as long as you take care of these, one pack of oven baggies will last you quite a while actually. So I'm going to go ahead and meet you uh, back over there at the, uh, the solar cooker. Stay tuned. All right, go ahead and get the wood out of here. This piece of wood's pretty hot. Pretty hot, you definitely feel heat. So what we do, we just take it and slide it in here. Right back here in the back. Now what I want to do is I want to raise this front part just a bit so it'll reflect 
some of the rays coming in instead of bouncing them straight up out of here I want them to bounce back in here and down so we'll just take a piece of wood here actually we'll use this piece This acts as a slow cooker, and it is almost impossible to burn food when using this technique. So basically just set it, come back every so often, and reposition it because the sun will, as it moves in the sky, or actually we're moving, the sun doesn't so much. Uh, you're going to have to reposition it so it tracks with the uh, with the sun. But other than that, you just set it up and let it do its thing. And it's already getting hot. So we'll bounce back every so often and take a look at it, but when we got a lot of condensation in this bag, that'll be the, uh, the cue that it's hot enough in there that the water is vaporizing. So you're looking at probably 170, 180, 200. I've seen people cook muffins in this manner. I have not. I've seen people do casseroles. Um, it's pretty interesting. You know, you just take a repurposing... Uh, a common item and uh, using it uh, for another purpose. We'll leave it right here the way it is and if we have to we can always do some adjustments in a while. So that is, looking at the shadow back here, Looks like we're pretty symmetrical, so the sun is right there. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, that pot's getting hot. It's actually heating up pretty fast. I hope it cooks, because that's going to be an outstanding lunch. I'm guesstimating that it will take about a good two hours, probably about two hours. Uh, with it quartered, uh, hopefully the cooking time will be a little bit less, but we'll uh, bounce back, so we might as well go ahead and uh, give you a shot here of the my watch so we can time this. Okay, so we put it on about 11, figure 1120. About 1120, so we'll uh, We'll come back and check, take a peek at it at about, uh, eh, I figure about 12.30. I'm going to be doing some other filming up here. I've had a couple more projects I'm going to work on, so I'm going to go and get busy on those and uh, basically just let this thing, let it do its thing. So I will uh, see you back here in a while. All right, let's get over here. It is... Uh, 1244. Been in there what an hour and what's that an hour and twenty-five? I believe. We had a problem. Uh, a lot of smoke drifted over here. You can see the shadow back here is not symmetrical. It's wider here. So we have to turn this. A lot of smoke drifted over, and blocked out the sun for a while, probably a good 30 minutes. So I'm not really sure. Oh, let's see here. Ike!
interesting I can't even leave my hands on there it burned me um, so apparently even with the smoke blocking the Sun oh wow yeah okay well apparently the UV rays were coming through in a sufficient number to uh, keep the heat up but uh, we should start seeing condensation in here inside the bag wow yeah that's hot I'm gonna have to reposition unfortunately I'm gonna have to pull this out because the Sun is gonna be going behind a tree here so I'm probably gonna have to move this operation uh, right over there and the uh, the opening here so got a little bit 15 20 minutes maybe before I have to do that but yeah you look at the shadow back here you want the shadow to be symmetrical on uh, both sides if it's wider on one side and narrow on the other it's not facing the Sun you can also take your arm stand right behind I use the line that line there and then side upward to the Sun so we're more or less on track here but yeah I'll have to drag this drag it over there in the clearing here just a little bit because it's going to go behind a it's right there it's going to go right behind this tree here in a little bit so we'll uh, get back with this in a while and check it again so hopefully in about 47 so we started what one I think it was 120 uh, 1120 I think it was one o'clock yeah hopefully around two two o'clock maybe 230 should be done as soon as we see the condensation on the bag so we'll get back here in a while stay tuned all right I moved this guy some time ago. Sap all over my hands. Uh, the bag's puffed up. That's a good sign. Ow! It feels like it come out of a stove. Yeah, the whole thing is just, it's, it would burn me if I left my hand on there. So, uh, it seems to be doing its thing. It's definitely hot, real hot. I don't see any condensation yet. It's definitely hot. I would say uh, usually I use my pinky when I do primitive cooking and if I can't hold my pinky on whatever it is it's it's 160 to 180 so this is really hot it's probably 200 degrees I would imagine uh, no condensation yet though so the time is 141 so we're what a little over two hours so I guess we'll come back and check it. Now I'm gonna have to slide it over further because I have a shadow coming over here from another tree. So uh, we'll come back at uh, 2.30, 2.30ish. Hopefully it'll be done by then, that's three hour mark. The smoke came in and it was really heavy for about 30 minutes and cooled things down so that did not help us any I don't know if you can see yeah you can see the smoke it's a lot of forest fires and uh, it's pretty smoky the skies are pretty hazy as a matter of fact it's kind of getting you see the Sun's not real bright it's kind of orangey looking so it's getting filtered a lot anyways I'm gonna go ahead and slide this over probably over to there and uh, we'll come back in about an hour check it out stay tuned
All right, it's been about four hours and I think the cooking time could have been would have been probably about two and a half I'm thinking somewhere around there if we didn't have all the haze from the smoke it's several times it was so thick uh, it actually blocked out the Sun and things started to cool down so it's been kind of a not really the best day for this but I'll tell you what this thing is so hot I can't even keep my fingers on the handles. I'm going to put a couple sticks under there to carry it. Uh, it's really hot. It's like it just come out of the oven. So let's open this up and take a look. I haven't had anything to eat since breakfast. I'm pretty hungry. Yikes. Yeah, it's... Ooh. Yeah, I, I can't even... That's as quick as I can keep my hands on this metal. I mean, it is... It is hot, and you can see all the condensation on here. going here. Yeah, I can't keep my pinky on the meat. That's always my meat thermometer. Oh yeah, this is done. This is definitely done. Probably been done a while. I've been working on some other projects and so I'm just getting back over here, but my guess is it's probably been done. Oh yeah, this is definitely done. Wow. Yeah, it's done. It's probably 180, 190 degrees. But very moist being in the... Uh, we'll put the twist tie back on the camera stand so I don't lose it. It acts as a slow cooker, so you really can't really can't burn the food. But yeah, this is probably, I'm going to guess, it, it may have been done an hour ago. Oh boy. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get this pot back over there and get dished up. Stay tuned. It's time to get the grub on. Oh yeah, this is perfect. Mm. Wow, cooked in that lemon juice, slow cooked. Mm. Delicious, just falling apart. Falling right off the bone. Wow. 
I tell you, that lemon juice. Mmm. Yellow jackets around here. Bone. I quartered this. I broke the ribs. Okay, go on, get out of here. Yellow jackets just don't take no for an answer. tried this method, I highly recommend it. These yellow jackets are just relentless. I'm going to go ahead and finish scarfing down, and then we'll go ahead and conclude this episode. Stay tuned. Well, that was a great meal. Well worth the wait. If we didn't have the uh, haze and the smoke and a couple rounds of uh, heavy smoke, cover that drifted over and completely blocked the sun. I'm thinking probably a cook time of about two and a half hours maybe, so that's all right. It was worth waiting for, but uh, works great. Give it a try. I hope all of you enjoyed this, this episode as much as I did making it today. Please like, subscribe, and share. I hope all of you are having an outstanding day or night, depending on where you're located, and I will see all of you very soon on the next one. Everybody take care. Bye-bye.